Right now we have uh, two vaccines that have an extended use authorization by the FDA, um, and both of them have the same mechanism of action. They teach our cells how to make a harmless piece of spike protein um, for the SARS-CoV-2. Our cells then display this protein on their surface, and that is what our immune systems respond to. They do not use the live virus that causes COVID-19, so they cannot give you COVID-19. They also do not affect our DNA in any way because they do not enter the nucleus of the cell. So a lot of the hesitancy that we're seeing out in the community has to do with, man, this came really fast. How could that be still safe and effective? And how do you develop a vaccine that quickly? It has been on a record pace. Well, these are some of the elements that we think led to the vaccine developing so quickly and yet safe and effectively. One is funding the effort. Vaccines take a great deal of funding to be able to get um, to using clinically um, between all the development and the research that needs to happen. This effort um, through uh, Operation Warp Speed and other private and government funded initiatives was able to be kicked into high gear very quickly. The US government alone supported this with greater than $10 billion. The next step is to have a parallel process to not do things sequentially. So you don't, instead of just doing the development um, and then the testing, both these things were done together at the same time. And in addition, instead of gathering all the data and waiting till the studies were in completion, the FDA has been continuously monitoring with increased visibility um, by the pharmacies um, to provide the data in a real-time format. So by the time the trials were done, the FDA had already been reviewing all of the trial data as it was happening. The third thing that really helped with this um, particular mRNA vaccine was that it is not new technology. This knowledge was being built on information that we already had from past experience. In terms of looking at the spike protein, that had already been um, investigated, looking at MERS and SARS for targeting this for potential coronaviruses. These elements that stick out there that look like the crown that gives it the name um, are obvious targets for our um, vaccines. mRNA as a technique was already being used in the 1990s to try to treat diabetes insipidus through production of a hormone vasopressin. So what are some other things that helped well, making it globally. And um, we know that the Chinese scientists sequenced the genome very quickly in January 2019 and then readily shared that information. That allowed for a building block for the US, Britain, and other co uh, countries to collaborate on a global effort with sharing knowledge back and forth in order to come together as a global effort to create this vaccine. And what are we doing now to continue to assure that even though this was developed quickly, that it's safe and effective? The CDC has put in, um, has developed an application that's used um, that you can download readily to your devices called VSAFE. This application allows for people who have received the vaccine to put in their symptoms um, that they're having after the vaccine. So the CDC in real time can have monitoring of any adverse events or symptoms that people are feeling. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about COVID-19 vaccine myths. One belief is we can't trust COVID-19 vaccines because they were rushed. And I hope that I've explained to you some of the reasons why we've been able to get this vaccine out much quicker and assure you that no, no steps were skipped and shut or shortcuts taken, that all of the appropriate testing for vaccines were done on this vaccine as they would with any other vaccine. They were just mechanisms in place to make this go much quicker. The next one is I could get COVID-19 from the vaccine. And as we discussed, um, the vaccine's primary immune system to fight off the virus. But in the case of the mRNA vaccine, this one does not even enter into the nucleus and there is no way for the mRNA vaccine to interact with genetic material. The next one is we don't even know what's in these vaccines. I presented to you a complete list of the ingredients in the vaccine and mostly what is in the mRNA vaccines is the mRNA, the lipids, the salts and sugars needed to keep it stabilized. The vaccine can alter DNA and genetic makeup. And as we discussed, um, they do not integrate with our own DNA. I already had COVID-19, so I won't benefit from the vaccine. 
Although it is true that we believe that COVID, having acquired COVID-19 uh, infection naturally does uh, defer some immunity, um, this may be only effective up to 90, 90 days. There have been some cases of people who have become reinfected after that time. The hope and the anticipation is that with a vaccine and a booster, that any uh, immunity that you receive will last longer and be more robust. So even if you have had COVID-19, we recommend that you get vaccinated. What should the timing of that be? Currently, the timing is to get the vaccine when you can, as long as you're not actively infected. Since COVID-19's viral rate is so high, I don't need the vaccine. Many people do recover with mild disease. Many other people uh, will experience severe disease. It is not always clear who will um, have severe disease and who will not. And so in addition to protecting yourself, it is really helpful to try to limit the spread of this disease by more people becoming vaccinated with a goal of reaching herd immunity so we can stop the spread of this disease in its tracks. Once I get the vaccine, I won't have to wear a mask or worry about social distancing. Currently, it takes two doses for the vaccines that are approved. And after that, about two weeks after your last dose in order to reach a full state of immunity. We will continue to wear masks for some time now as we wait for everybody to get the vaccine and for the prevalence of this disease process to decrease in our community. One of the questions that is still being answered with investigation is if this will stop the spread of the disease. So the question is, is if you get infected or exposed to COVID-19 and you've had the vaccine, you may not become symptomatic or ill, but enough of the virus may be existent that you could spread that to other people. Until we have a definitive answer on whether that could occur, we recommend that people continue to do all the precautions they've already been doing, wearing a mask, washing your hands, and physically distancing. We are on a goal to get everyone in our community vaccinated by May 31st, and we hope to achieve that. And eventually we'll be able to hug, smile, and go mask free again.